are back here now with actor Sean Patrick Flannery. So, look, you, we were talking about so many of your interests and whatnot. I want to talk to you about Dexter because here's a show that has something like 35, 37 Emmy, Golden Globe nominations to, to walk on to a show in, what, eighth season. What is it like? Because, you know, in acting worlds, you there's no such thing as a bad role. You do big jobs, you do small jobs, you do big screen, small screen. What's the difference of going on to a show like that for you? I mean, for me, you know, it's a proven recipe. I mean, they're, they're, they're in their eighth season, so they've got the formula down. I mean, everybody works so well together. You know, the left hand speaking to the right hand. Their, their model of efficiency, you know, makes everything else pale by comparison. And coming together with a bunch of people that the, the writing is rock solid. It's, it's, uh, it's got a fan base out there. It's just, you know, it's, it, it really is. I'm not trying to sound overly grateful, but I am. It's, it's just an honor to be a part of something that's that successful. And the show is kind of an iconic show, you know? It's a, It was at the forefront of, like, the television revolution, you know, when television started to really surpass movies in the theater yeah. as far as quality and writing. It's just an honor for me to be a part of something like that. Is this your final season? Uh, it, it appears to be the last season of Dexter Is Man. Whoa! Did, uh, is it for sure, or there maybe you might get picked up? Well, I mean, the entertainment industry, nothing yeah. is for sure. Yeah. But as far as I know, oh, uh, okay. it, I, I think it's relatively confirmed. So. Well, you know, you've had the opportunity, though, in your career to work with legends. You've had Jack Lemmon, Sissy Spacek, William Dafoe. What was that experience like for you to be with such iconic actors? I mean, it's, it, it's, it's great, you know, I mean, one of the, the people that I was really looking forward to working with, uh, uh, my first film out of the gate was, uh, I worked with Jack Lemmon, uh, he, he did a film uh, called right, Grass the Heart, gate. yeah, Whoa. and uh, that, was, that was pretty much my holy grail of, you know, desire to work with an actor. Um, I didn't get to share any scenes with him, but uh, myself and Roddy McDowell would go to Cracker Barrel every night, as a matter of fact, Roddy McDowell sat me down and pretty much convinced me to do Powder when I presented it to him, and I campaigned heavily for the role, and finally when they... They said I'd gotten it. I discussed it with Roddy. You know, it's going to require me shaving my head and everything. And he, you know, one of the most wonderful human beings you can ever meet, he pretty much told me about the industry and how you have to embrace it and run with it. And I, you know, he was just a super good friend and a wonderful guy. But there's, you worked with Christopher Walken as well. Yes, sir. Is yeah. he creepy? Because he seems like he's, but I know he's like, no, I just want to know. He seems like he would be, but I, I'm such a fan of his, but I'm afraid of him. No, you know, you know, you know I'll, I'll tell you this about Christopher Walken, because, I mean, coming into it, you know, you, you, you think he's a very weird and bizarre individual, but I yeah. think it's more a product of the cadence of his speech and the weird placement of pauses. Like, for example, uh, he, he and I say the same things. If you transcribe it, it's the same thing, but some... Some some different elements can make it very weird. Like For example, what? I'm doing the home and family show. That doesn't sound weird. Right. But if I said I'm doing the home and family show, then suddenly it becomes a like, what did you just say? Transcribe it. What he's saying is really, really quite normal. And I, I, I went to lunch with him. I spent a lot of time with him. And when it loses its effect, you realize, wow, this guy is just so much more normal than me. He's been married for umpteen million years. He's a ballroom dancer. He's dancer. committed to his wife. He's just a wonderful human being. And I really get enough cowbell. So he's always one of more Never. Never, ever get enough cowbell. Sorry, inside reference. What a wonderful role. <laughs> you can YouTube that 50 times in a row, and you still can't get enough. The, uh, so outside of the acting, uh, as we love to uh, celebrate on our show, is other interests that people have, and as they are actors or whatnot, entertainers, you are in big time in the martial arts business. Yes, sir. How did that come to you? You know, uh, everybody's got their story of how they got into martial arts, and I think pretty much uh, the party line is... You know, I've, I got into it because of Bruce Lee, and uh, mine's a little bit different. Uh, the first time that I saw Elvis Presley doing Suspicious Minds, uh, he, had a, he had what looked like a, a gi on, and he was on stage going, We're calling it a trap. I'm not making that up. I know. No, I know. I just, I just imagine him right. doing that because we've seen him do that. It almost makes yeah. my martial arts you know, journey illegitimate. But, uh, <laughs> but I saw him doing that, and he's you know, throwing the kicks. Going, We're calling it a trap. So I told my dad, I said, you know, I, what, what is that? And my dad knew, I don't know how he knew, he knew that he studied uh, Kenpo Karate with the old man Ed Parker. And uh, that pretty much... time into uh, karate. huge into it. But the, yeah. the way that I got into it, one day I saw 
Uh, one of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen at the time, her name was Glenda Bilbo. I mean, a stinger missile of another order of stinger missile magnitude altogether. Okay. She used to push her bicycle with a flat tire because it had a basket on the front. She would carry things in its basket. And she was walking in front of the Piggly Wiggly, and I used to, I wouldn't have stalked her, but I kind of wait, followed her. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I was eight. Okay. Where? Where? I'm clear on this, okay? We didn't get the but age. she was gorgeous. She was the kind of girl that, you know, showed you what the trouser one was all about. But anyway, so I saw her turning every day in a place that called Tang Wai Do. I didn't know what it meant, but she went in there, and I just told my mom, I said, whatever's in there, I gotta give me a piece of whatever's in there. <laughs> and so she signed me up for these classes, and uh, as it is everything in life, as you gentlemen know, everything I've ever done in my life is because I followed a girl. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's really no different. True with acting? <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, same really? way. Yes, yeah. uh, honest to God, I was, uh, I was going to University of St. Thomas in uh, Houston, Texas. And again, not to sound like a cliche, but the most beautiful girl I've ever seen at the time. Second most beautiful. Second. Yeah. yeah, no, at the time. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> graduating anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, I, love uh, I saw this this wonderful, you know, perfect embodiment of everything you find wonderful about this life leaving a building every Monday. So I dropped an English class and I signed up in business affairs for whatever they were teaching in that building. And it was uh, it was the theater department, and that's really. What got me into the, the, the acting industry? Well, not only are you interested in you know, the acting, the martial arts, but you're very interested in magic, as we found out. So we want to bring Murray. You know, come on back in. I'm Murray's on. How you doing, man? Great to see you on your show.